Nicolas Cage was once one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, but most of the movies he stars in now are low-budget, direct-to-video flops. His net worth today is about $25 million, and the days of him making $20 million per film are likely gone forever. Cage was once worth over $150 million, but he blew nearly all that money on peculiar items like dinosaur fossils and shrunken pygmy heads. Because of his financial problems, Cage works non-stop and films as many as eight movies per year. Here's a look at how Nick Cage earned millions and nearly lost it all. Ten years ago, Nicolas Cage was one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. His career has had as many ups and downs as his finances. His best roles have earned him critical praise and awards, but he also has five Razzie nominations for Worst Actor. He's given compelling performances playing struggling and depressed characters in films like Adaptation and Leaving Las Vegas. But there are other times where his acting is so over the top you can't help but laugh. I mean, have you seen The Wicker Man? At the height of his career, he was synonymous with blockbuster hits. His paydays aren't what they used to be, but they're still larger than what they were at the beginning of his career. Cage made his big screen debut in the 1982 film Fast Times at Ridgemont High alongside Sean Penn and Judge Reinhold. He was just 18 years old at the time, and his role was little more than a glorified cameo, but that was just the beginning. He would soon go on to star in critically acclaimed hits like Raising Arizona and Moonstruck. Cage cemented his status as a Hollywood heavyweight with his groundbreaking role in Leaving Las Vegas. The film was a huge hit both critically and financially. The movie earned nearly $50 million on a $4 million budget. Cage earned only $240,000 for his heartbreaking performance, but that didn't bother him too much because he took home something more valuable than money, an Oscar. Cage's captivating performance also earned him a Golden Globe Award. Nicolas Cage's net worth has fluctuated dramatically during his career. He was once worth $150 million thanks to a string of hits and huge $20 million paydays. However, his excessive spending soon got the best of him. He blew millions, faced foreclosures on many of his mansions, and had to pay $6.3 million in back taxes to the IRS. Today, he is worth $25 million, but he could just as easily be broke. His financial problems were so bad that he filed a lawsuit against his ex-business manager. The lawsuit alleged that Cage's ex-manager failed to alert him to the fact that his money was running out and that he had overextended his lines of credit with banks. In 2009, Nick Cage was one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. He earned $40 million that year despite not starring in any huge blockbusters. He earned $20 million for both Gone in 60 Seconds and National Treasure. National Treasure was a huge hit and earned $347 million at the box office on a $100 million budget. The Jerry Bruckheimer-produced Disney film was such a massive triumph that it spawned an even more successful sequel. National Treasure 2 Book of Secrets earned $459.2 million at the box office on a $130 million budget. Cage even earned $20 million for the John Woo-directed WW2 drama Wind Talkers, which ended up being a huge flop, earning just $77.6 million on a $115 million budget. When Nick Cage and Jerry Bruckheimer team up, it usually translates into boffo box office. Cage earned $4 million for The Rock, which took home $335.1 million at the box office on a $75 million budget. Con Air, which was also produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, cemented Cage as an action star. The 1997 film was another huge hit and earned $224 million at the box office on a $75 million budget. Cage took home big paydays for almost all his roles in the late 90s. He earned $6 million for Face Off, $16 million for Snake Eyes, and $10 million for Bringing Out the Dead. Even if the movies were flops, Cage still pocketed millions. Cage is actually one of the most overpaid actors in Hollywood. His films earn an average of $4.40 for every $1 he's paid. Today, Cage makes between $2 and $8 million per film. It's a far cry from what he used to make, but it's enough for him to live on as long as he doesn't go on another epic spending spree. Many of the biggest action stars of the 90s have appeared in Japanese TV commercials. Cage took his talents to Japan and starred in a series of bizarre TV spots advertising Sankyo Pachinko machines. Cage really turned the crazy meter up to 11 for these commercials. Nicolas Cage has even found some inventive ways to earn money over the years. Gambling often leads to financial disaster, but Cage seemed to be quite skilled at the game of roulette. At least he used to be. About 30 years ago, Cage was relaxing in the Bahamas, and one day he decided to test his luck in a casino. He turned $200 into $20,000 in just 20 minutes. He was on a hot streak playing roulette, and he didn't miss a single number. After securing his winnings, Cage donated all the money to a local orphanage. 
He handed the money to the headmistress of the orphanage in person and then never looked back. Cage says he hasn't gambled once since then. He clearly knew to quit while he was ahead. Cage burned through millions buying strange and expensive items. At one point, he owned 15 properties and even a private island. He was not content with mansions and condos. He also purchased castles in Europe and a haunted house in New Orleans. Many of these properties could have earned Cage a pretty penny, but he had to sell a lot of them at a loss to pay off his debts. The LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans is considered to be one of the most haunted houses in America, and it was once owned by Cage. He paid $3.4 million for the spooky abode. Cage once owned an elegant Gothic mansion in Middleton, Rhode Island, but he was forced to sell the estate at a huge loss. Cage spent $15.7 million on the 24,000-square-foot countryside mansion, but he sold it for just $6.5 million. Cage once owned a stunning $25 million waterfront mansion in Newport Beach, California. And luckily, things worked out better for Cage when he sold this property. He sold the 8,355-square-foot mansion for $35 million at the height of the market. It's no surprise that Nicolas Cage's taste in real estate is eccentric. In 2006, Cage bought Needstein Castle for $2.3 million. But once again, financial hardship forced him to sell the 500-year-old fortress. Needstein Castle sits on 400 acres of forest and grassland in Itzelwang, Germany. And the 9,688-square-foot castle has 28 rooms, including 10 bedrooms and 5 bathrooms. Before he was forced to sell, Cage had plans to renovate the dilapidated castle and return it to its former glory. In 2007, Cage spent $10 million on Midford Castle in Somerset, England. The mock Gothic castle dates back to 1775 and is shaped like the Ace of Clubs. Cage took a huge hit on the sale of this castle, too. He was forced to sell Midford Castle for about $4.7 million. When celebs amass huge fortunes, they often buy private islands, and Cage is no exception. He purchased Leaf K Island in the Bahamas for $3 million in 2006. But by 2008, he had listed the island for sale with a $7 million price tag. Several other celebs own islands close to Leaf K, including Johnny Depp, Richard Branson, and Faith Hill. To say Nicolas Cage is weird would be an understatement. When he had cash to burn, he would often buy extremely unique items. When Cage kicks the bucket, he will have a luxurious resting place because he purchased a nine-foot-tall burial tomb in New Orleans. The extravagant resting place is emblazoned with the Latin phrase omnia ab uno, which translates to everything from one. Speaking of creepy, Cage also owns a collection of shrunken pygmy heads, which will come in handy if he ever plays a witch doctor on the big screen. It's no secret that Cage loves superheroes. Before playing Ghost Rider and Big Daddy, he dreamed of playing Superman on the silver screen. He was even cast as the Man of Steel in Tim Burton's Superman film. Unfortunately, the movie was canceled and Cage's dream was squashed. Cage's comic collection would make any comic nerd jealous. He once owned a near-mint copy of Action Comics No. 1, which features the first appearance of Superman. He paid $150,000 for the comic and made a huge profit when he sold it at auction for $2.1 million. Forget fluffy puppies and cuddly kittens, Cage likes his pets to be as strange as possible. He once owned a $150,000 octopus and a host of other sea creatures which he kept in a massive aquarium. He actually believed the octopus would help him improve his acting skills. He also once owned a pair of rare albino king cobras named Moby and Sheba. Cage spent $276,000 to secure the Slytherin companions. Of course, the guy who starred in Gone in 60 Seconds would have a cool car collection but it's not nearly what it used to be. Before his financial problems, Cage owned nine Rolls-Royce Phantoms and four yachts, including a super yacht called the Cerita. He owned a total of 50 cars and 30 motorcycles at the time. Cage once had a $500,000 1964 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud III in his garage, as well as a $2.8 million 1938 Bugatti Type 57C Adelant, and an $850,000 Jaguar D-Type O. And he also owned a Yamaha VMAX, which is the same model of motorcycle he rode in Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Nicolas Cage probably won't be making $20 million per picture anytime soon, but a career comeback is still a possibility. The script for National Treasure 3 is being worked on, and there are even talks of a National Treasure series that would debut on Disney+. Cage is also set to star as Joe Exotic in a scripted series based on the Netflix crime documentary Tiger King. Cage could make millions from these roles, and the acclaim could thrust him back into the spotlight. 
Here's a fun fact. Did you know that Nicolas Cage once outbid Leonardo DiCaprio for a Tyrannosaurus skull? It was a Tyrannosaurus Batar skull, to be exact. Tyrannosaurus Batar, also known as Tarbosaurus, was a close relative of the T-Rex that lived in Asia. Cage's purchase of the dino skull was one of the greatest financial mistakes of his life. Let's just say it came back to bite him. Not only did he pay $276,000 for the fossil, but he had to return the dino skull to Mongolian officials. It turns out the skull was stolen from the Gobi Desert and illegally smuggled into the US. Talk about bad luck. Thanks for watching. See you next time.